Welcome to We Don't Have Cookies with your host, Jason Marshall. Uh, I'm your host, Don Smith, as that weird guy just said. Jason, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing all right. This, this, we have our guest in the studio already. She kind of jumped ship. She's just came right in, <laughs> made herself at home, <laughs> which is fantastic. Leslie Battle, welcome to the show. I can talk now? You can talk. Why okay, not? awesome. We'll, I'm not going to shut up. We'll, Great. We'll, do it. <laughs> well, I can still this shut excites the mic me. off, so that's all right. Now, yeah, I bet. <laughs> now, but, well, how, if how I suddenly disappear, he did it. <laughs> how was everybody's week? Good. I had my birthday Sunday. Happy birthday. I worked and then I went home and I responded to 500 Facebook greetings. Oh. (laughs) Because, you know, that's the kind of life I'm living these days. Uh. It's not attention seeking. It's, yeah, it is. See, that's that's why I never wish anybody happy birthday on Facebook because I'm sure they just get bombarded and it gets annoying to click through and say not yeah. when you're desperate for attention like me. Well, yeah, every, that's true, that's thank true. you everyone. <laughs> I'll hear from you next year. I wanted my daughter to feel really special for her birthday. So while she was at school, I went through every Facebook post she ever posted and I hit like and every picture she was tagged in, everything. So her phone went off a couple hundred Do times. Do you realize <laughs> how inherently creepy that looks? I wanted her to know I was thinking of her. That is her not going to be the interpretation of that action, sir. Uh, she was I'm, very annoyed. Did she, did she tell her mom? <laughs> oh, she told everybody. She wasn't the, a fan. Yeah, that, mm, ooh, hmm. That's something we're going to How old is she? She is 18 now. Oh, good God. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, that was why would you know that? No, I, I thought you were talking like a younger kid who maybe would be like, oh, OK, this is just dad. Be-. No, no, this is like this almost annoying. adult person. That, oh, <laughs> yeah. this was purposely annoying. You trying to get her to move Under out? The, is that is she that is happening? moving? Oh, she's, <laughs> she is now. <laughs> I love my children I'm dearly, gorgeous. but I hold nothing against people who don't. <laughs> My kids are, are 23, 20, well, my, my middle one will be 20 in October. My daughter just turned 16. And they're all, like, looking at me, like, are are you going to start, you know, like, in on us about the grandkids thing? And I'm like, no. <laughs> there are 7 billion people on this planet. I do not think the human race is going to suffer if you decide not to have kids. Yeah, there you go. And I don't want to be Mima yet. I got <laughs> some things I need to take care of before I can take that title on. So, yeah, no, we're cool. We're good. Well, Jason, how was your weekend? Do you have anything anything exciting going on? I finally started back to work on the house. The guy was able to come back, and that was nice because I've been waiting for two months for him to come back. What do you have done? Uh, he had another job somewhere else he had to do, and I knew he was coming back because he left, I don't know, maybe a couple thousand dollars worth of tools with me. What I, are you I having done? What kind of work are you having done? The Pretty entire house yeah. remodeled. <laughs> oh. Including okay. the porch and the cellar and the attic and so getting stuff <laughs> ripped out and drywall and yeah stuff. I, I that's possibly, coming a long way already. Yeah. How how big is the place? It's two stories. Uh, it's it's a pretty decent size house. It's not like huge or anything, but uh, it's a, it's an undertaking because we rewired it, we replumbed it. I could have just built a new house. But, so did you just uh, preemptively <laughs> take all the copper out so nobody would want to break in? No, but. Uh, it ended up coming out. <laughs> well, that's a thing. Yeah, it's yeah, a we, bonus because now well, we, we get some money of, back out. We ripped a lot of plumbing out just with us. Yeah. That was, that was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. <laughs> There's something to be said about the, the therapeutic value of deconstructing something. I'm good at that part. <laughs> Not so good about the constructing part. It's right. The, the putting it back together. together you yeah. know, you're supposed to like backward engineer stuff. And it's like, oh, yeah, if I take it apart, I can put it back together. That never. Who? who? I, I have known a lot of backwards engineers. That were successful? Uh, no, just backwards. Oh, okay, yeah. Because, yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is. Something, something in the universe is like, <laughs> we got another one. <laughs> yeah, the DIY network completely overbloated my, my confidence. Oh, those things are the done. worst, aren't they? I watched that, and I thought, yeah, I can do that. They did it in okay. about a week. Yeah. YouTube <laughs> is the devil, man. Oh, yeah. you can do this. You can absolutely, or, and Pinterest. Those two things my wife alone. Some of that, yeah. Has she had some successes with it though? Uh, crocheting, yeah. yeah I mean, if, if if what you end up with approximates, then you're doing pretty good. But so many people, what they end up with, it's just like that's not even close. <laughs> <laughs> but good try. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you an E for effort. I'll give you an attendance trophy. But I had a fun weekend myself. I actually I got to die. I got to be killed by the lovely Erin R. Ryan once more. She's killed me before. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, w- I went Saturday. We worked on a little, uh, little, little project, and uh, there was a lot of fake blood. 
Thankfully. Thankfully, yeah. Thankfully, <laughs> thankfully it was fake. Uh, We've decided to cut open your carotid to make it more realistic. Yeah. But er- I, I was covered just head to toe in fake blood. So I in a suit and tie of all things, and it's all trash now. It had to be thrown out. The fun thing was I threw it all in the bed of my truck. And when I got home, I thought I got everything out. Well, I had to work Sunday morning. I'm driving to work, and I see something in the back flopping around. I'm like, what the heck? I get to work, and I look back there, and hanging on the edge, just getting ready to blow out on a pedestrian or another car on the interstate, is a just still dripping wet with fake blood necktie. And I thought, wouldn't that have been fun to explain if it landed on a cop's windshield it's or something? It's not real. It's not real. I don't think I would have been able to get that out before I was shot. You know, Come with me, sir. They're a little aggressive nowadays. No, I don't think you would get shot. Yeah, and then uh, Monday night I was able to get up at Rocky's Pizza Ring. The whole place was packed and really great audience. I did about 80% new stuff, which somehow nice. went over well. And it was a I was there really a couple weeks show. ago. That's that's a, that's such a fun room. Yes, it is. It is, it is so, it's such a fun room. And and former the, guest Doug Morgan runs that. So yes. yes. Shout out to him. Still love that shirt. By hey, the Comedy way. Dad. Yeah. He's my comedy dad. Oh, he's your Doug comedy is my dad. comedy dad. He was the first comic that I met. First open mic that I did. You liked 5th. 2011. I'm not just being a girl with remembering things, but that's kind of, you know, it's kind of a big deal. And what's funny is we met at the Funny Bone in Columbus. So he just happened to be out there for that open mic, gave me one of his cards. And he said, you know, we're always looking for a good female comics. Now, this is my first open mic, so I have no idea if I'm going to be good or not. Right? right. He said, and he, and he told me to record everything. And so I took that advice. It's been five years now. So he, but yeah, he's my comedy dad. Well, it's, it's uh, amazing that you met Doug Morgan, your first open mic, and kept doing comedy. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Doug, Doug's awesome. <laughs> just fun to pick on. And how cute is that baby? I, there's a lot of pictures on Facebook. Of there are baby. so many people yes. with babies right now, and I'm so glad I'm at a stage in life when I can look yes. at them and be like, I don't want one. Yep. Not mine. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we started the show, me and you were talking, and you're a dealer, right? I deal blackjack in a casino in Columbus, yes. Oh, see, I misinterpreted that. Oh, you, were, you, were <laughs> you know, it's for your funny because already, right? I actually do a bit about exactly that because I'm also a vet. And so I retired from the National Guard January of last year. Uh-huh. And so um, the, the bit goes well, when I left the military, I became a dealer, and the room just goes stone silent every time. <laughs> And so then I'm just like, I need everybody to step into 2016 with me. I deal blackjack at a casino. If you thought anything different, we need to talk after the show about how insensitive you are. <laughs> <laughs> the shift that I work is normally 4 a.m. in the morning to noon. And oh, trust so me, that place is open 24 <laughs> so No, no. The people that come in at 5 o'clock on a Tuesday morning are avoiding all that. That, there are some people that, you know, coming to the casino you know, is just their relaxing whatever yeah, thing. <laughs> I can see that because yeah. it's like going to a movie at a matinee. So oh, that you're right. just avoiding the crowd and all right. the kids with their phones out. Because, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the, the weekend time from like 11 at night to about three or four, maybe even five. Usually we're busiest, you know, the first couple of hours of my shift and around about seven it starts dwindling. You know, people start, you know, finding their way out. Just want to go to a quiet place there's, and not get robbed. Well, and there's things that you can do to prevent getting robbed. I mean, you can actually, like, there's things you can do to prevent being robbed. You don't have to walk out with a big bundle of money. Yeah, the best thing I do when I go to a casino to prevent being robbed is I lose all my money so I don't have anything <laughs> left. You know, that's the plan that most people execute. Yeah, yeah that's it. Well, I figure that way I'm not disappointed because I, that's I think they what don't think of it as do. a plan, but it, it still happens nonetheless. <laughs> yeah. So I just want to chalk it up to them planning to do it. But yeah. Yeah. See, that way, if I do win, I can come out there going, oh, man, and everybody thinks I lost. But I mean, because I look disappointed because <laughs> my plan failed. The near misses, though, I mean, you know, the just the shy of that jackpot hand. It's, oh, it's heartbreaking <laughs> sometimes. You got any good stories from there? Just from the table? Because I, I know there has to be some. Well, when I first started working there, oh, my God. So Don's seen my set. Jason, I don't think you've seen nah, me perform. It's, it's been well, a while, though. It's, well, I was doing the cougar stuff then, though, right? Yeah, I believe yeah, so. I, yeah. A, a big part of my set is me joking about being a cougar. And so, um, oh gosh, this was, geez, I think I'd been working there maybe a week or two. I mean, I was still just so very fresh, right? And there was a party at my table. It was a birthday party. And so I guess like girlfriend, you know, a couple other friends, and then the younger brother. Younger brother is blitzed 
Okay. I get up there and I swear you could have seen the cartoon hearts in his eyes. He immediately was just <laughs> like, Oh my, I need your phone number. We should, I, I just want to talk. I d-. Okay. First of all, if I was the kind of person who would take advantage of the situation, you would be so disappointed when you wake up in the morning. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're seeing Angelina Jolie right now, not me, but you know, and he was, he was just so insistent and I was trying to, you know, kindly defect, deflect him because I, you know, he was, he was drunk. He was so drunk. And I mean, this kid couldn't have been like 22, 23 max. Right. Mm-hmm. And so um, he was just like, well, can't you give me your number? Is there a policy against, you know, you, you, you socializing with players, all this kind of stuff. And I said, sir, the number is 21. That's the name of the game. That's the only number I will give you today. <laughs> and everybody at the table's like, oh, and he looked so hurt. I felt kind of bad, but I was just like, dude, just no, it's not, it's not going to happen. <laughs> no. And then I just felt like really ironic that half of my stuff is about being a cougar. And then the one kid, <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back on the life. And this is a political free zone. No, I'm kidding. Uh, we, we can talk about anything here, as long as it's not politics. Because, uh, you know, I, it's not that I don't care. I just don't want to care. What frustrates me about the way that it's being done is we've absolutely gotten away from, these are my accomplishments, this is what I can do for you, and right. having a track record of doing this for you. Well, yeah. Now, now it's, it's just, just, well, they... Right. It's, it's, yeah, it's, the, uh, it's, and it's... Yeah, that I just. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm I'm voting for Gary Johnson of the Libertarian Party. It's not so much that I'm a libertarian, but he's the only presidential candidate to uh, actually come out and publicly promise that he's not going to smoke weed so that he can stay focused on the campaign. And I think that's fantastic. That's a problem for because, people. I didn't because, know that was something they need to openly declare. Because that just changes my entire outlook on politicians at this point. Like, you mean everybody's token up? And, what? Yeah. Well, that's, what? well, that's the thing. Because he's just going to stop for the campaign. So win or lose at the end of it, he's firing back up. And I think that's what we need. We need somebody who's a little bit high. <laughs> in the White House in order to try to figure out because you need, you know, because that's I what, just that's laugh at that president's... because um, I'm pretty sure they've all. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, that, well, there's it's a difference between new. pot and cocaine, though. Well, that's <laughs> See, true. they've all been on that's cocaine. True. That's why they think they're going to do so much. Lord We, have we mercy. need a pothead in there to just I... relax a little bit, you know, tone it down. You know, all these, all these conflicts Putin. throughout you gotta, the world. You got to be ready well, for Putin. I can just yeah. see him token up and being like, if we're going to send four hundred million dollars to Iran, I'm getting a couple of pounds back. <laughs> yeah, so you put them in the book bags of all the people you're sending here. Uh, I got a plan. Yeah, you said you got to be ready for Putin, and Bill Clinton got all excited. Mm. <laughs> right? Did you see him playing with the balloons? I did. That was I'm the, sorry. Uh, that would so be and, me. And, I, and I, I, I am tell. the grown up in the park with the bubbles, <laughs> blowing bubbles, while yeah, but, all these other kids are like, Why is she got bubbles? I saw him playing with the balloons, and I could tell that he did not stop smoking weed to focus on the campaign. <laughs> you know what? I don't even think it's a matter of being in a state of inebriation. If you, if you as an adult can be uninhibited enough to play with balloons, I mean, that because t- people are too flipping up tight now. That's I true. mean, you can't even drive down the road with somebody mean mugging at you. I'm just like, Look, I'm just trying to get the <laughs> Starbucks. I don't know why yeah. you got all this anger just because my car is black. I mean, geez, come there's, on. There's let's a lot not, of anger out there. There's I would, a lot of anger. I would like to see it have been Bernie Sanders and he's just popping them all all angry. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally with his yeah. fist on the air, get off my lawn, but vote for me. You know, This is the I mean, waste I'm talking about, America. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need balloons. Yeah. Just you gotta admit, there was, a, there was easily a few hundred thousand dollars worth of balloons yeah. there. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Just, like, <laughs> That's a I lot like of balloons. The, uh, the Onion did the thing where uh, Howard Dean showed up drunk and all bearded yes. and everything. <laughs> Don't you recognize me? I thought that and, was hilarious. And you know, in retrospect, was that yell? All no. that bad. No, but, <laughs> I mean, no not at all. You're, you're looking at the stuff that's happening now, and it's just like, whatever happened to that one guy who just yelled awkwardly that one <laughs> yeah. time? Can and we that bring him back? Him, that, that pretty the much entire, cost him the, the entire, entire campaign. Now, here's my thing about that, though. Media grabbed onto it. 
Oh, absolutely. And 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 that's the thing with so many things that are happening and Dave right Chappelle now. Is people are just it and he oh, made it my, so much better. Come on, you gotta love Chappelle. <laughs> Chappelle, oh my gosh, that man is such a freaking genius. Oh, absolutely. I just I so many things on Chappelle's show I would watch and I would laugh at, and then I would immediately be like, I'm gonna have to convert to Catholicism so I can go to convention <laughs> because I can't laugh at that and not feel a little bit of guilt. That was a little bit of guilt. Oh man, I love Chappelle. He got buffed up for a while there too. No. There was this like underground video of him performing somewhere after he'd been out of the scene for like a year and he was so skinny, but in this mm. video he was just like buff and I was just kind of like, what's Dave been eating? That's <laughs> that's not just exercise. <laughs> Some other stuff going on there, but People ask me, like, what my goals are and all this kind of stuff. And they're just like, oh, well, you know, you're going to have a sitcom. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, you know, I really just want to be a working comic. I want to be financially stable, which sounds crazy, right? Yeah, that's... But uh... <laughs> I, I just want to, you know, make enough to, to, to be comfortable. And what's comfortable for me now is not what it was years ago. I absolutely had bought into the whole, you know, house picket fence, right. all that stuff. Now, I share an apartment with my son and one of his school buddies. And it's actually like the most liberating thing because I'm just responsible for my room, you know, (laughs) and Mm -hmm. past that I can I can travel. I can, you know, do what I want. And I mean, again, my normal shift at work is 4 a.m. to 11. I don't bother the guys when I leave. You know, I'm usually alone when I come home and I just, you know, I'm kind of in, you know, this place. Well, back to what you said a minute ago about wanting to be a working comic and not have a sitcom. That was the thing that bothered me on um forget the name last comic standing rod man one i don't know if you remember him i honestly don't watch a lot of tv and and comedy shows especially i have this like phobia that i'm gonna unconsciously start incorporating yeah yeah. and i yeah yeah. well as a stand-up he was awesome but the whole premise of the show is you're the best stand-up comedian now they give you a sitcom I love the guy's stand up, but I don't want to watch TV and see that guy pretending to be somebody's dad. I want to go a, to the a funny comic bone may and watch not necessarily stage. right be a good actor, and yeah. um, I, a, a lot of people make that assumption. I guess it's because yeah. because you're on stage, well, you're, and in a way you're a being a character. And, but yeah. I, see, I don't want to have that face recognition that people feel ownership over me. I mean, uh, I. I even now, you know, have some followers that are very kind and I'm very grateful that they're kind, but I'm just paranoid enough that it's kind of hard for a stranger to approach me and me not be just a little bit like standoffish or just it's just a self-protection thing. Right. And the the thought that, you know, I could be in a restaurant with my kids and somebody walk up and want something and be mad at me for saying, you know, can I finish my dinner? I mean, yeah. I. I, I don't want that level that people feel like, you know, they're entitled to when I'm just trying to be a regular person. I mean, a lot of people wonder why some celebrities become like recluses. It's because people can <laughs> right. be rude. Exactly. I mean, you know, it's great you know, when and, people can respect I, your boundaries, but if they can't, that's and, and, you, and you're going to remember the one who doesn't respect your boundaries. That's just how life is. Yeah. You know, you're not going to think about the thousands of people who respected you. You're going to think about that one person who was just like, well, I can't believe you're such a blah, blah, blah. You know, the, the only way I'd want that kind of facial recognition is if I was like hanging out with one of those actors like Russell Crowe that's going to beat the heck out of him when they start bothering me. <laughs> right. Russ, Russ, get him. <laughs> right. <laughs> that way I could say, hey, it wasn't me. Well, well, Russell Crowe's crazy. I, <laughs> it was the craziest thing. Yeah. I've never seen anything like it this week. <laughs> That's the thing. Like right out of high school, I joined the Army. And so I moved away. I moved from Texas to Washington State was my first active duty station and um you know you just kind of like in explore the world mode and i mean i knew that i had friends but i also was just kind of like no i want to you know see what else is out there and i've never outgrown that i've really never outgrown that i think that's part of the reason that i like comedy so much one i love performing i mean first and foremost i love performing i just cannot compare anything else to the feeling that i have when I'm in front of a crowd and they're just loving it. I mean, there's there's just nothing like that. Yeah. But being able to do that anywhere. I mean, you know, basically you will find some type of comedy pretty much anywhere. I mean, I've been to the most remote rural places. And it's funny to me because a lot of times those crowds are more receptive than than the urban crowds. 
You know, mm-hmm. the, the, the places in the city where there is a dedicated club and there are shows all the time and people are just kind of take it or leave it because they take it for granted. But if you go out to one of these tiny little towns where they only have something like this every six months, they're just like, well, we all got to get out here. We got to support this because we need people to come back, right. you know? And um, I have a joke about it, but I mean, it's it's absolutely true. You know, so many times I've had friends who were just like, are you sure you want to go out there? Because there's not... There's no black people there. <laughs> you know, we're we're concerned for your safety kind of thing. And it's now I did have a situation. <laughs> I was in a place called New Holland and this gentleman who was drunk um, evidently mistook me for a lady that lived either close or even in town or something like that. But other people were just like, uh, clearly this is not her because she's 20 years younger. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is this, this, um, the bar was like a repurposed house. And so the ladies room was like right off of the main floor. So I come out of the ladies room and here's this guy like in my face, Lulu, what are you doing? And I'm just like, I just came out of the ladies room. I don't know how to answer that <laughs> other than what's just like obvious. And I was just like, no, I'm, I'm not Lulu. Oh, of course you are. Well, okay. If you're going to argue with me about my identity, <laughs> I could already tell where this conversation's going to go. <laughs> what's Lulu hiding? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So finally somebody kind of peeled him off of me and he was like, Oh, I'm so sorry. Like, well, you know, you're wasted. Yep. Sorry, so, Lulu. <laughs> I, yeah, sorry, Lulu. I hope it's not insulting <laughs> that I got mistaken for you. People so you, are you said you've been doing comedy for was it five years? Mm-hmm. I just had my fifth anniversary the fifth of July. I think it's kind of inaccurate to say that from the first open mic that I remember that I was doing comedy. You know what I mean? I mean, we'll say it from that point because we all want a point of reference. Right. But easily, easily a year, if not a year and a half before I started thinking, oh, I have a handle kind of on how much I don't know about this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, the first four, five, six months, you're just like getting in front of people. It's it's literally just, I mean, you know, yeah, you want to have decent material and everything, but the main impetus is just getting up and getting rid of the jitters that are associated with getting up. I think that my jitters have, have transformed into this kind of healthy anticipation. Right. Yeah. And I mean, it's just like, it's just like with, with acting, you know, to me, if you're not nervous about it, if you don't have something, you know, going on internally that has, you know, not necessarily the, anxiety the per se, adrenaline. but right, a little right. bit of adrenaline rush. But yeah, if you don't right. have that, then it's kind of safe to say that you're really, your head's yeah. not there. And I can definitely tell when I'm uh, not in the right headspace for a show, because that's exactly what happens if if, if I'm so distracted with something else that I'm not, you know, completely focused on what I'm about to do in whatever time span. I mean, and it's funny because I guess that I present as a person who's really composed, but I guess I just learned that from being in the military and having a brief, you know, senior people that, you know, inside, you know, it's like the duck on the pond with the feet going crazy, but above the water, you look smooth. That's, that's, that's me like nine tenths of the time is inside. I'm just, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And outside I'm like, well, yes, sir, that's absolutely what we were planning to do. You know? <laughs> absolutely. Nine tenths of my desire to be on stage or attention sinking. I mean, I've just been, you know, and I'm horrible at relationships my kids are getting older, so they don't need mommy like they used to. And and there's, you know, just a lot of things with being, you know, in my mid 40s that, you know, it's it's just the season or what have you. But nonetheless, you know, so much of me being in comedy has to do with me attention seeking. And when I have a decent performance and, you know, like I said, I present as this person who's so composed and so self-assured and all this kind of stuff. And then I'm just like, dude, I was so nervous. And people are just like, no, you weren't. Okay. You may not have seen it, and that's good, but trust me. And what makes it even worse, I don't drink alcohol. So people just know that I just, you know, have a handle on everything because right. I don't drink alcohol. No, I don't drink alcohol because I'm a freaking lightweight. I mean, <laughs> you could give me one vodka cranberry and I'd probably go home with you. I mean, that's just being realistic. I, I just that now. don't want to. <laughs> right. Now there's like seven guys, like one yep. vodka cranberry. Yep, they're writing Got it down it. on me. Awesome. I just like <laughs> vodka cranberry. See what I did there? <laughs> but no, I am. And, and that's the thing because I don't drink, then I have that much less of a tolerance. Right. So, you know, if I do drink, I know it doesn't take that much for me to drink. And I just, I don't 
I don't like being vulnerable. I don't like putting myself. I mean, I absolutely understand the concept of not blaming a victim for an assault or anything like that, because it, you can't take responsibility for the actions of another person. But I absolutely don't like having lost time. I don't like feeling like I would leave myself vulnerable for that. I mean, could I actually fight off an attacker? I don't know. But are my chances a lot better sober that I could, if I can't fight them off, at least outsmart them? Or at least, you know, get them to understand that what they're thinking about doing isn't the right thing to do? Yeah, if I were drunk, I know I wouldn't be able to. So, I don't know. That's It's, it's a convoluted thing. And, you know, there's so much about that here lately. I mean, I had to uh, get my mindset about that kind of adjusted because I absolutely was one of those, well, you can't wear short clothes and you can't do this and you can't do that. I went through the uh, sexual harassment response training through the military. And that was one of the things that they were teaching about was like, how do you take responsibility for the actions of another human being? I mean, when you think about it, people that are assaulted and not just, you know, sexually, but even, um, you know, like mug for money or whatever. Right. Granted, there may be things that you are doing that make you more vulnerable, but that doesn't give that person the right to do that to you. We really, I think, as a society need to get better about recognizing that because there's so much victim shaming just all, all, all across the board. I mean, we wonder why people don't report things. And it's because, you know, I, I can't look like a, a bleep to my, my dogs. You know what I mean? Right. So I don't know where why I'm sorry. We, no, that's okay. No, <laughs> See, the, the show's called The Life, and sometimes the life isn't all funny. Well, and <laughs> but that's life, and no. I think it's our job as comics. And, and I've been really grateful that there have been times that I've done shows, and there have been people come up to me after the show, and I'm like, oh, my God, I was having the worst day. I'm so glad I came to the show. You were so funny. I mean, if that's, you know, my purpose in life, to help people get their mind off of their bad day, then I, I run with that. It's funny to me because so many people are like, well, it's so hard, you know, to get up in front of people and, and talk. And it's, no, it's not. Not for me. <laughs> My nickname in first grade was Motormouth. Come on. <laughs> if that wasn't a, a, a premonition of some sort, I don't know what is. So how about them Orioles? Yeah, Orioles. <laughs> Orioles. Oh, okay. I don't even watch baseball. I do. I awkwardly mention like a sports team and then people are like, oh, you want... No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now we have Pokemon. Now we have Pokemon and that. I'm going to end up everything. playing this silly game. I can tell you right now, it's going to happen <laughs> because so many friends my age are playing the stinking game and they're all talking about how it's a great way to meet people and you know, you're out and you're I, you know, I've you're out in nature and all this it, kind of yeah. stuff. I mean, I'll just be honest with you, okay? You know, I've been divorced now for like 6 years and so this whole dating thing, it just is what it is. But if I meet a guy who can say Pikachu with a straight face, <laughs> I might get married again. I'm just saying that's, you know, that's that's a level of, of, of self-assuredness that I can absolutely be on board yeah, with. I go. mean, you that's... know, I, I mean, I'd get to go on romantic long walks, you know, staring into a phone. But hey, right. it's, it's right. a start. It's a start. Yeah, you get yeah, you get to go on romantic long walks, staring into a phone, having really no idea of where you're walking, you know, and not even well, not taking in the scenery, just looking. I for myself your am not because I've seen a couple of people do that, and I'm just like, why is there not a safety thing on there? Yeah. If it's if it's GPS based, it should absolutely be like, um, look up and see if the signal light is on. See, you know? I, I want to know if there's like <clears throat> Pokemon that you can find at the Grand Canyon because that seems like a bad place for that. Um, There's a gas monster at the Holocaust Museum. I don't know if you guys know <gasps> about that. But no. Yeah. yeah I thought not, I brought that up before. I can't even I did that, not. I, I oh, can't help yeah. it. That's and bad. It was obviously a glitch in the game, but yeah. At least it wasn't an electric type. But yeah, well, yeah. Once they it's found still out, yeah. not that. Yeah. And I think that now they're that's, offering. That's called a der glitch. Is what that's that is. That's uh, yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. I wow. don't know the terminology to name whatever it was, but yeah, that's that's pretty bad. There, um, <laughs> but I've I've heard because there was something about um, there were some at the uh, the museum or the site for Hiroshima, and Japan was like, we're going to need you not to do that. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. we're gonna there's and so now I think the developers are working on a so certain places can opt out because like right after it was released, Franklin County Sheriff's Department was like, if you trespass on our property while we're training, we will not be held accountable for wow. what happens to you. Because it looks like they would have had some forethought. I mean, to a, at least a small degree. 
Let's not throw this. But these see, there's this little thing called capitalism. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when you got millions of people saying, "Give me the thing now," somebody's yeah. gonna give them the thing now. I can't figure out if this is just a fad that's going to burn itself out really quick, or if this is just the start of all kind. Like People we're going to have still a Super play Mario. Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, I want a yeah. Super Mario. Go I do too. Because there's going to be so many coins. people walking around <laughs> with their heads busted open. <laughs> yeah. You know. I, well, and the turtle see. population will just totally suffer. They're going to be dead turtles laying around. <laughs> I'm playing turtles Super are going to be Mario. like, we don't go there anymore. That's not we. That yeah. place is not for us anymore. We don't do that. I don't know about Pokemon Go. I've, I've it's seen not for everyone. I've, I've but seen I mean, people so... walking into bushes out on campus. I saw that the other day. Oh, well, Somebody absolutely. walked into a hedgerow. Well, you know what they do. You the know building. what people are doing with it too. There's actually like Poke porn now. There's like a Reddit page where people, because wow. the thing is, you can either have the, the game screen on or it'll show the Pokemon superimposed on whatever your camera's pointed at. And so people are, they've got Pokemon <laughs> on their private parts. You know, uh, it, some of them are really funny. Though. <laughs> a friend of mine showed me the page and I'm like, oh my God, that's hilarious. But I just, I couldn't imagine like being at a certain physical state and be like wait i gotta put a pokemon on it you yeah. know I mean, what? <laughs> yep hold on hold up hold that pose that's like the thing that's... that just got me because you know people a lot of people are into you know the pictures and stuff and i'm just like if if your first thought right now is to reach for your camera i'm doing something <laughs> wrong okay i'm not mm, no no i think that's part of human nature anytime we're given a thing no matter what that thing is we got to figure out how to either get porno on it or make porno out of it. That's just <laughs> yeah, it's human that's, nature in general. Yeah. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I will agree with that. I will agree with that. I was Terrible kind of ashamed party. of myself because I realized I had a favorite porn star. Isn't that like a certain kind of person <laughs> that has a favorite porn star? Is that like normal? I've always or? had a problem picking just one as a favorite. You know, that's <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it's easier for me because a lot of times the focus isn't so much on the guy. Well, yeah, that's so true. That's there's, true. I, there's, guess it, I guess it depends on what type of. Yeah, but there's this one guy that's kind of. Yeah, and it's so funny because I found this meme. Of him, and it said in Spanish, "Yes, I am your God." It, but it said it in Spanish. And I'm like, "There's people that speak Spanish that watch him." Oh my God, that's hilarious! <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he's who international. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Sins. So, okay, uh, okay. I, I'm not familiar with him. We uh, ask the tough questions. Yeah. I know, right? Yes. Yeah. Who's no, his name is Johnny Sins. He's star. he's just absolutely random, fit, bald, white guy, but. I just knew I'd get an email like, why didn't you ask her? <laughs> <laughs> we have to know. <laughs> okay, vodka cranberry, ball white guys. I can do yeah. this. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't ask you. That would have been a cool thing. And, be, and be, able to, be able to say Pikachu with a straight face. And, and say Pikachu it, yep, with a straight face. I don't know. I might require that they actually you're, play Pokemon. Yeah, you're, you're, you're giving away the keys of the kingdom tonight. <laughs> Not <so. hardly. laughs> There's so much baggage that comes along with this package. Just, come on. Come on. <laughs> You okay, fellas? Yeah, I did see a, a, a <laughs> meme today though, and it was really inspiring to me because you know, a single woman will grasp onto anything. It said, "You're not intimidating; he's intimidated." There's a difference, and I'm like, "That right there," because I'm so serious. I mean, I'm five eight. I weigh about one seventy five. People tell me I don't look my weight, but I weigh about one seventy five. I'm nearly forty six years old. I'm not just an aggressive person, but I have been told time and time again by my male friends that, well, but you're intimidating to men. How am I intimidating to men? Well, you're outspoken, you're intelligent, you're funny, you're pretty. And I'm just like, I always heard that that was what guys wanted. <laughs> Can somebody give me a new memo? Because I'm doing it wrong, you know. Well, that's that's what guys say they want, but they just no, want to, you know. I, 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 be- quiet and sexy and that's you know especially the quiet part yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> much more so the quiet well part. it's it's, it's kind of like women can you saying make that, an apple it's pie like women that's saying like they want a nice cool guy pants. when they really just all seem that's to date not the always true but <laughs> here's the deal about the nice guy you know just like um lady in the street feeking the sheets kind of thing yeah nice guy but you better be able to pull my hair 
Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when nobody else is looking, there ain't nothing yep. for you to be embarrassed about. And if you're still yeah. ashamed when there ain't nobody but me and you, mm, we, yeah. Mm. yeah when, when it's time, don't sit there. Are you comfortable? <laughs> you are not gotcha. an orderly. It is not. I didn't just get my appendix out. <laughs> It's not what's happening right now. <laughs> All right. Well, as much as I hate to do it, we better uh, take a break and uh, let you head out. Thanks and, so much uh, for having me on the yeah, show, though. It, it's I been really a pleasure. Enjoyed it. I appreciate Can you I uh, do some shameless self-promotion real Absolutely. Quick? Yes. We uh, need to do that I before you I am go. Leslie Battle. I am on Facebook. My Facebook fan page is uh, LNB Creative. I'm also, I have a website, which is lesliebattlecomedy.com, all one word. And uh, if you check my website, you can find out where I'm going to be. I usually try to keep it updated two to four weeks out on dates. So um, actually the next big thing that I have coming up tomorrow night, I am getting roasted for my anniversary to celebrate my birthday and my five-year anniversary in comedy. And I'm going to have an all-female panel of uh, comics who are going to just burn me to the point awesome. beyond recognition. <laughs> so I've got that coming up. And then also uh, I'm going to be competing in Louisville on Saturday in an all-female competition competition called No Balls Meet. So, uh, right, clever, <laughs> right, right? But um, like I said, my website's lesliebattlecomedy.com. There's links to the rest of my social media from there. And, um, and actually, I believe I linked your site on, I, I put a link for your site on my site. So awesome. So checks out my site. It'll have lesliebattle.com's link on there, too. So, all right. Good well, times, I good times. I appreciate you coming on. That Thanks. Good to have, have you. Have fun. All right. We're back on the life. Uh, Leslie Battle is uh, off and away. It was a pleasure to have her in. And we have... Her replacement has made it in. Travis Charles is Hello. in the studio with us. So we were talking a little bit before the break. You've been doing comedy for uh, for ten, 10 years. years. Yeah, it's a long time, a decade, <laughs> a whole decade. <laughs> he started during the Bush administration, and that's just uh, yeah. It actually, yeah. yeah, it's when the guy threw the shoes at him. Yeah, well, that, that's a good place to start. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good to start comedy when somebody's when a polit any politicians getting something thrown at them. <laughs> <laughs> what got you into comedy? I don't know. It was just one of those things when I was younger. You know, I liked making people laugh, and my parents always told me jokes, and my aunts told me inappropriate jokes, and I would repeat them, and my <laughs> friends would laugh, and I was like, "This feels kind of neat." And I finally got the courage around twenty five to step foot on a stage, and that was kind of kind of how it all started right there, man. Yeah. Where was your first show at? The Richmond Funny Bone in Virginia. It was an open mic in front of 300 people. Wow. Wow, that's a good crowd for <laughs> yeah. an open mic. They, uh, they pack them in there. And I went up and I couldn't even grab the mic because my hand went up and it was shaking so bad. I was like, I'm going to put that back in my pocket. <laughs> See, I've always said, even when I was nervous, I had to take the mic out. It's just the first the first couple times I had that twist in the cord around and that yeah. nervous kind of hand movements till I figured out that's distracting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, I was going to grab the mic, but it was shaking so bad. I was like, I don't know what it's going to do. So I just, I mean, it was really bad, like a Parkinson's almost. And I just put it back in my pocket. I was like, no, I'm going to stand here and look even more ridiculous than I already do. <laughs> And I was stuttering, knees were shaking, but in my, for some reason I wanted to do it again. So, and then the yeah, next that's... show, like two days later, was three people at a club. <laughs> so I got the highs and lows in like about wow. a, a three day period. <laughs> Pretty quick to get both yeah. sides of it like that. <laughs> was that a bar show? Your second one? Yeah, that was a place called okay. the Canal Club, uh, and I had to follow two rap groups. Oh wow! And, yeah, <laughs> wow! Yeah. So that's... yeah, I was pretty extreme, like my first two shows, <laughs> and it, it didn't deter me. So that's good. Yeah. So it was just like the epitome of an open mic. Anybody can do whatever. Oh they yeah. Want. It was actually <laughs> it was I was actually just a, like a rap open mic, and the guy was like, "We should put some comics up," and they put like a like a flyer out, and me and my other buddy was like, "We should go do this." And after we left, we was like, "We shouldn't have done that." So. <laughs> I can imagine that's got to be rough. Man. Yeah, it, it it builds courage. What was the crowd like? <laughs> Just not want to see you at all. No, I can, I can no. see that. It was a couple. It was a couple. No <laughs> yeah, no. It was a couple that's phrases thrown at us. You know, and we were like, ah, our bad. Like, yeah, we're not Eminem, but you know, we're gonna try to make you laugh. And wait, we, we didn't. We didn't. <laughs> no it's, uh, it's hard when you when you combine music and comedy. That's like two different sets of fans and yeah. it's really hard to combine those two yeah so yeah that's <laughs> I, i've i've had a, a couple shows where there was music involved and usually the comedy didn't go as well 
it's but a it's little still, different if yeah. you got music opening for the comedian, just somebody out there doing a song right. or two. They came to see a comedy show, and this guy's just up there screwing right. around until everybody gets seated and their orders are in or something. Yeah. But once it's the other way around, <laughs> that's, that's I mean, a lot of thing. comics back in the day would open up four bands, but the audience kind of knew the deal. Yeah. You know, it'd be one guy doing like 15 or 20 while they're setting up the drums or whatever, and then all of a sudden, you know, you know, the Van Halen would come on in about an hour or whatever. So they, they forgot all about whatever comic that was. Right. That was kind of a thing back in the day, but two rap groups and then a little white comic coming up does not mash well yeah, at all. Uh, yeah, having, at a bar. The, having the <laughs> yeah. band, having the, the rap groups open up for the comic, yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that'd be a lot tougher than... What? Uh, you, you learn. That's a, Oh, yeah. Well, that's that's one of the, the good things about uh, bombing on stage and dying on stage is that's when you learn the yes. most. <laughs> Do you remember any of the heckles? I'm sure there had to be a good one out there somewhere. <laughs> I think the FCC listens to this show a little bit. But you do remember that, <laughs> yeah, right? Okay. I remember some of them. I'd say it'd, uh, it'd be hard to forget, man. Yeah, because I, I was uh, very, very dumb and tried to do a magic trip, trip magic trick up front. The magic. I didn't and stuck with a magic trip. I remember the girl's tone of voice and everything, how she made fun of me. And I was like, <laughs> oh my, I've got three minutes left. I don't want to be up here. But That's a long three <laughs> yes. minutes right there. After you shoot a fireball out of your hand, it's a long three minutes. <laughs> 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 comedy fireball <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what did you tie that into i have no it, it you just did it something about burning when i went to the bathroom or something and okay. it, very adolescent 25 year old yeah. joke pecker joke <laughs> yeah. Probably. Yeah, yeah there you go so, <laughs> I just had to ask what that. Yeah. <laughs> from what i remember <laughs> i'm pretty sure that. that's what it was and i don't know i look back at some of the stuff i did and i'm like what was i thinking <laughs> so some of the stuff I had on YouTube, I had to take off. I, I should probably take a bunch of my older stuff off of YouTube because <laughs> some of it. it's just like. <laughs> well, I think I think a big part of it is a lot of it's my early stuff where I was talking a lot about my in laws. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and, eh, probably should get that off there, but you know, <laughs> you just gotta keep emailing it to them. Let them look at it. <laughs> Check this out. Yeah, if they they are they, you know they hate me enough. So. <laughs> But it was really good material for the time. It's just, you know, a little upsetting to some folks, I guess. I tend to tell jokes. I just hope people never hear them, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially if I leave town. If I go somewhere out of town, I'm like, ah, oh, it's free reign. Whatever yeah. my wife said I shouldn't say, I'm going to say it. You know, I'm like, she'll never find out. Yeah, I have to, if I want to do that material, I have to do it in shows where my wife's not in attendance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's why she goes most of them, just to keep me from doing it, I think. Yeah. It's like you're not doing it again. <laughs> I'm watching. <laughs> when 10 years, you had to travel a lot. Right? After, yeah, I've traveled quite a bit. So um, where was your favorite place? Um, Hartford, Connecticut's fun, random enough. Um, I wasn't expecting that yeah. one. Yeah. I mean, because it, it's... That's cool, though. It's not too far from New York, not too far from Boston, so it's a good mix of people. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a really good city. I mean, it's a good city for comedy. They come out to laugh, and like, if you're for funny, dude, I mean, they go crazy. Mm -hmm. And uh, Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah? Yeah. So that was a... <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was a really fun place. <laughs> I mean, the, the show seats about 400, and like they fill up almost every weekend. Wow. So, I mean, it's constant large crowds and i mean they give you reception i mean it feels like the rafters are shaking when they laugh hard i mean i've done a few things and like i've done some stuff in vegas but you know still like shows in like omaha and stuff or stand out my mind more than the things mm. i did in vegas or whatever but wow yeah yeah i, would, I wouldn't have guessed either of i mean vegas yeah. is more fun <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot more to do in vegas than there is omaha nebraska you know they have st steaks that's about it and then a couple bars, but, you know, the comedy there is actually real. The crowds just love it, you know. And mm. actually, uh, Columbus. I had a lot of fun at the Columbus Funny Bone. And I used to do that one. Uh. And uh, that was a good room before they redid it. I haven't performed since they've redone it, but it was a good yeah, crowd. You, you said Omaha, Nebraska. I was thinking about a uh, Jim Jeffries, an Australian comedian, yeah. ha has a TV show called Legit, which is a great show, by the way. Mm -hmm. I kind of thought it'd be a lot of... You know, and all that I, stuff on the show but, is based on his life. Even the yeah. car that he drives in the show, that's his actual car. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen it. He was taking a friend when he was going to a uh, comedy show in Omaha. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, the friend's mom said, and no prostitutes. And he said, he said, it's Omaha. I already called. They're both busy. <laughs> yeah. That sounds about right. <laughs> that was just what went through my head when you said Omaha. We're, yeah, back we, to, This yeah, is your show, Jim not Jim Jeffries. Who the yeah, heck was, is he? He's an Australian guy, right? <laughs> but Jim, if you're listening, you know, call in. Because <laughs> you apparently have also nothing to do. the phone rings, I'm like, I'm out of here. Like, what am I doing here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of my favorite, one of my uh, best friends in comedy is an Australian guy, and he knows Jim. But actually, his name's Jim as well. But he talks about him a lot too, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just everywhere you go, he yeah. gets brought up. It's, it's all right. It happens. Uh, well, what's it weird is that's not his real name. His real first name's Jeff, but he didn't like being called Jeff, so he calls himself Jim and turned his first name that he doesn't like into his last name. <laughs> so so his, his real last that. name, Jimmery's. No. Jeff, Jeff Jimmerys, Jimmerys. He just thought, thought he'd be Jim Jeffries. I don't like Jeff that. too much. Go Jim. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the name Jeff. It just seems yeah. like you didn't really travel too far away yeah. from the name you didn't like in the first place. Yeah, there's, uh, there's it was just the it was just the F that he didn't like <laughs> in the be. first name. I need to lose a consonant. Yep, and a Jeff Jim. That's good. Yep. Three. <laughs> From mm, four. Mm, mm, I like M. Mm. <laughs> I'll be Jim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> so, what's mm. your favorite Jim Jeff? No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you met Tim? No, I, <laughs> no, I have not met Jim Jeffries. I don't we'll know any of his material. Going. Honestly, I don't. <laughs> I, I know some of his, but I can't say it on the radio because I'll get fired. That's probably stuff I might remember <laughs> if I heard it. But anyway. Back to you <laughs> again. <laughs> so, do you have any shows coming up? You said you you took a break for a little while, or um, are you still in the break coming out of the uh, break? I, I've been out of the break for <laughs> probably since February, or March. So, I've kind of done enough shows to kind of knock the dust off. And I've been doing longer sets 15, 20, 30 minute sets. I'm headlining a show at Murray's. Oh, really? Um, in September, like the first one in September. I'm not sure of the date yet. But I'm supposed to be headlining that one. Um, oh, I'm co-heading, co-headlining Murray's on uh, August 20th. Okay. Because they so, did a, co- a competition. Gotcha. And the top two winners get to headline, so I got to do a 30-minute set. I mean, that's a, that's, that's a long, one-sided conversation. Yeah, absolutely. So, and if you're not funny, yeah. that's an hour and a half. That's um, Michael Morris runs that. Yeah, I got yeah. that one coming up. And then the Dayton Bone is getting ready to do the roast battles. Yeah, I... I uh, I think I'm signed up for so that. So I'm signed too. up on that as well. I, I've done one roast, and I everybody I did it on, I dug the deepest thing I could find out about them and wrote jokes about that. I was like, I'm just going to just murder him off the bat. Wow. And like after like two or three jokes for each person I hit, the audience was like, what is he doing? And yeah. I'm like, I don't care. Like, <laughs> this is a roast. Like, I, I want you to cry yeah, when I'm going with, down. Yeah, we're buddies, <laughs> but hey, that time in fifth grade. <laughs> That'll be interesting. Yeah. That'll be a lot of fun. But should be fun. At least, yeah. it, it, even if we we suck at it, it'll be fun to watch everybody else go up and either there's going to yeah. be some really really good people doing it. Yeah, I'm not going to be one of them. I hope I'm decent. But there's going to probably be some guys who are just beasts, you know, because all they do is make fun of people. Yeah, you know, I don't do that a lot. <laughs> I can if I need to, but it, it should be fun either way. I don't know what the whole end outcome of the whole thing is going to be, but it should be a fun yeah. show. Oh yeah, it definitely sounds like a lot of fun. You said you used to travel with a. Um a hypnotist. Yeah. Right? What was that like, man? Because I've, I've seen them promoted in He clubs. was programmed not to remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. No. You traveled with a hypnotist. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Start barking like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> what? You got my trigger word, man. My trigger word. No, his name was Jay Medicine Hat. Um, he was one of the better uh, hypnotists in the country, and he traveled all the funny bones. He would get like, like four to ten weeks per club. Like wow. he took a lot of work from the clubs. I would talk to him about it and like, you know, how, like, how much do you believe what's going on himself? And he would just tell me, you know, I've been doing it for 30 years and, you know, he believes in it a little bit. And, you know, it's like, I say it's 50, 50, half the people are up there cause they want attention. Half the people are up there. I've seen people do things that you don't think they would do, you know, no, it's a power suggestion yeah. thing, power be, suggestion. Yeah. And I think, I think they do get really sleepy. You know, you got the ball spinning, you're staring at it. I mean, it's a type of hypnosis. I don't know how strong it is. I've never done it. But like I said, I mean, I've seen people and I've seen guys who should not want to be all over each other. And when he told them to go up to each other and hug and like play it out, just do it with no problem. I'm like, ooh. 
And he'd have to like pull them apart. And I'm like, and they wake up and they look so angry after he told them what they did. And I'm like, well, like, yeah, I mean, these guys are bigger than both of us, Jay. Like, what are you like? No, like they're going to look at me and you as the guys who did it. Like they're going to think we both did this to them. And then, it was him. yeah, no, it was the Indian. Get him. Like, it's not me. I mean, I've seen chick shirts come off and like skirts fly up. I had to pull girls like dresses down. While they were sitting there asleep, because like they were everything, I'm trying to be like decent, like pull them down, and the audience like waving, like I'm hiding it. I'm not trying to look at it. Like just, I mean, I've, it was a lot of stuff. Some girl pulled her weave off and threw it out in the audience. That doesn't happen. Black girls will not rip their uh, no, hair off. No, no, okay, yeah. that's just something they don't do. And she threw it out there like it was trash. And I'm like, ah, that's a, she's asleep. Like I don't know what's going on with her. But wow. then she sang Aretha Franklin with her uh with her cap on. So yeah, was she good? <laughs> Did she do all right? Yeah, she did pretty good. Okay. This was in Omaha. So. <laughs> a lot of memories from Omaha. But yeah, I mean, it was fun. I mean, I thought about doing it myself, but I enjoy telling jokes too much. I mean, to do the stage hypnosis thing. It seems like it'd be easy. It's a lot of money in it. I mean, I, I think a lot of people just, they just kind of want to believe. Yeah. You know? And you'll be surprised, even with like, like I think the guy's name is Rich Guzzi that comes to this funny bone and does it. Like, yeah, I've heard the name. You'll see a lot of the same audience members show up to every show, hmm. or every time they're in town, you'll see a huge chunk of like a following. Because once they like a hypnotist, they will show up every time they're in town and go to the shows two or three a week. To where oh, if you're okay. opening for one, you see these people like, I'm doing the same jokes I did last night. Sorry, <laughs> like you know. <laughs> and then you're like, I can't keep. I don't. I don't have an, three hours of material. So it kind of puts me. Or whoever opens at kind of like a disadvantage, because a third of the audience could be repeats from the week from prior that week. Yeah, that's already heard. That's everything already heard you. everything. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you just sound like a CD because they're like you're yelling out your punchlines. You're like, ah, yeah, all right, yeah, that's not good. Yeah, I mean, but it, it was it was a fun. I did that for like two years with them full time. Traveled a lot. I mean, it was a a lot of fun. I saw a lot of funny stuff. What yeah. was the craziest thing you've seen <sighs> with the hypnotist thing? Probably a dude. A dude got mad. At his wife on stage doing some of the stuff he was asking her to do. Out of nowhere, this huge guy walks up, moves tables out of the way, reaches up and just snatches her, throws her over his shoulder, and then storms out. The whole wow. time, Jay's wow. like, you've got to let me wake her up. You've got to let me, like, whatever she's in, you've got to let me wake her up before you take her out of here. And he just kept storming off. And, like, she looked like she was asleep. He wanted her that way. Yeah. Like, like, all right. That's thanks. done. Like, and we're all like, is she with him? Like, <laughs> yeah, like just some random dude. He's like, that's the one. Yeah. She's ready. We're going caveman tonight. It's time. Like, so, yeah, I mean, that's probably one of the most crazy. A guy fell off the stage and busted his face on a chair. Oh, was his name Puke? Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's an inside joke for people at date. <laughs> Still funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There was there was a fellow named Puke, a comic that went up at the Wiley Sunday Comics that uh, decided he would take an alternate exit off the stage <laughs> and fell over on a table. He calls himself Puke. <laughs> he calls yeah. himself Puke. All right, and he lives up to it. Oh, yeah. He's not, a sure if, yeah that's, not sure if the lights just blinded him, and he because that's where the, the where the stairs, stairs used to be. be. Yeah, then they moved. So them. not sure if he. Thought he was going the right way. They're pretty bright. I think he was trying to be funny, funny, and (laughs) just ended up being hilarious. (laughs) The funniest part of his set was falling onto the table. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Anytime, anytime a comic falls off stage, just funny. I don't care. (laughs) So, oh man, puke. That's good. Puke. Yep. There you go. There's been some great ones there. Yeah. (laughs) Definitely. Uh, After you took a break, when you come back, do you get? Do you use some of your older stuff, or are you just writing a lot of newer material? I've been or? writing a lot of new stuff, but the benefit I had is I'm not from Dayton. So all my old stuff was new stuff to everybody yeah. here. Well, there you go. It works. <laughs> it's like, I just wrote this yesterday, guys. Like, hold me five. <laughs> Boom. Like, that's funny. No. Um, I probably yeah, that had about- sounds like you've been rehearsing that for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I just wrote it last night. <laughs> I find old notebooks that I, that I wrote in when I was, like, younger, and I just reword the jokes to yeah. sound like me now. I've been writing a lot of new stuff, too, so kind of mixing it together. I mean, I've probably done at least 10 or 15 different five-minute sets at Wiley's over the past couple of months just doing different stuff. No, oh, that's good. Doing with the hookah. So, I mean, I've got a lot of new jokes that I really like. I'm hoping to get in front of a bigger crowd so I can see what they really do. Right. But, you know, that's how you, that's how you really know. You, I mean, when, you, when I first started, I was doing four or five shows a week, traveling yeah. hour, two hours, three hours after work to go do five to seven minutes. Yeah, just to rough. power it out, man. I mean, hey, yeah. and it, it paid off. Yeah. Within a year, you know, I had done like 400 shows in a year. 
because wow. I would do two in some night, and I mean, I was, you know, wow. you get Hardcore. your confidence, get your confidence. <laughs> yeah, and it caused my first divorce. So, <laughs> yay! <laughs> so, so there you go. Yeah, doing comedy does pay off. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, Joe? No. <laughs> Oh, that's <coughs> always fun. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let me think. Yeah, we should probably go ahead and wrap up and uh, take a little break, come back for the wrap up. It's been great having you in. Uh, have fun at Hookah tonight. Yeah, man. Yeah. Appreciate it. This was awesome. Yeah, have you met Leslie Battle that was in here? Just... Yeah, she took a picture of my beard. Oh, okay. okay yeah. Because okay. she, she's, she's really funny, too. She, she jokingly said it was going to be on a fetish site. There's a lot of us on uh, Leslie's fetish side. Yeah, where there's a beard, beard there's a way, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for coming on. I'm going to go ahead and play a song. And we'll uh, take a quick break, and we'll be back here shortly and wrap up. Oh, oh, well, before I go, do you have anything to plug? Any shows, any website or anything where uh, you can you say? Can find me on you YouTube. Me? Just check out Travis Charles. If you find a weird fat dude wearing a mask of some sort, it's probably me. <laughs> um <laughs> yeah, just check those out. It's not, like, it's not like a furry thing, is it? No, it's like oh, leather okay. face and like an old lady mask. <laughs> I, I'm boggling old toys. Like, I, I do stupid stuff. I, mean, I hate my own videos, but people watch them. So <laughs> there you I, go. I'll continue to make them. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. If you see a, yeah, a weird looking dude in a mask and you're like, what is that? That's me. It's Travis okay. Charles. We'll go ahead and take a break and we'll be back here shortly. Well, welcome back to the life on WWSU 106.9 FM, Fairborn, Dayton's right choice. I forgot to do that at the, uh, at the top of the hour, like I'm supposed to. So I'll try to squeeze it in now and hopefully nobody <laughs> notices. Uh, <laughs> well, first of all, I want to thank uh, both my guests tonight. Uh, the lovely Leslie battle and, uh, Travis Charles were both in, they were a lot of fun. So I'm going to let Jason take over. I'm sure he's got some stuff to throw out there. Yeah. We had a one year anniversary show on Monday. I had a few big announcements. Hopefully you've heard of Epic Rap Battles of History. They got about a million YouTube subscribers and all their videos have at least a million or so views. Sometimes they're in triple digits. Uh, they're giving me permission to play their stuff on the podcast and uh, really appreciate that from a guy named Nice Peter, who's part of that, <laughs> which after I started thinking about the name, uh, it's uh, really funny. I, I thought it was just meaning he was a nice dude. And then I was like, maybe that means a little more than I thought. Yeah. I, I don't know. I try not to think about it too much. Yeah, you try not to think about <laughs> nice Peter too much. That's yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> and Eugene Merman from uh, Fox's Bob's Burgers has given me permission to play a couple of his funny phone calls that he's made a while back. And Now, uh, that's, that, he plays Gene on bob's burgers right yeah. that's the son that has all the noise making yeah funny really show. really nice guy hopefully have him on the show sometime soon we kind of went back and forth about that a little bit but uh you know we'll cross that bridge when we get there i just want to thank everybody for their support it's it still blows my mind that every week somebody in china and the uk and france and ireland are tuning into the show so just want to thank everybody for that and like the page Facebook slash we don't have cookies. That's it for me. Awesome. Well, we'll go ahead and, uh, we'll go ahead and get out of here. As always, you can check out www.donsmithcomedy.com. Uh, you can drop me an email either through there, or you can always drop an email at the life one Oh six, nine at gmail.com. If you like the show, or if there's any changes we've made to the show that you don't like, and we can argue about them. So that's, <laughs> and again, Hate mail is always welcome, and if it's good enough, I'll read it on the air for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. Tell your friends about the show and leave a review. See you Monday. The show's called The Life, and sometimes the life isn't all funny.